Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Droid Life Show, episode 16. I'm your host, Kellen. The rest of the Droid Life team here as well. Ron, Tim, Eric. Everybody say hi real quick. How's it going, world? Hey. Hey. So it's good to see you guys again. I was away for a day or so in New York City, HTC's one event. Big stuff there. Hung out with Dave for a little bit. And uh, yeah, definitely lots to talk about with the HTC One. I know we all have some strong opinions, thoughts in general. It's a big deal. It's sort of the big, the big first, I'm sorry, the first big phone announcement of the year. Uh, yeah, lots going on there. So other than that, though, we want to talk about Google Glass because we got a really cool UI video today about what Google Glass could look like or maybe is starting to look like. We're not really sure. What about Google retail stores? Would anybody be interested in walking into a Google store and buying a Nexus or something like that? Um, NVIDIA's doing some Tiger Force stuff. We got NWC next week. Ubuntu, pretty sure I said that right. Uh, announced some tablet stuff, which had nothing to do with HTC's event, by the way. Uh, we've also got some apps and games to talk about. We'll answer some of your questions from Monday's Q&A session. Wrap up. Just talk shop. So uh, you guys want to talk about HTC One first? Get this thing going? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, so oh, just basically, basically overview, right? HTC announced the HTC One, New York City. Not a surprise; everyone knew it was pretty much going to be called that. What it was going to look like, all that good stuff. So we got 4.7 inch 1080p display, 468 pixels per inch, I believe, which is topping everyone in the market. I think, and that's probably just because it's a smaller screen. Uh, two gig RAM, 1.7 gigahertz, brand new Snapdragon Qualc or, sorry, Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 processor. Uh, not a 13 megapixel camera as was rumored. It's a four megapixel ultra pixel camera, or is it just a four ultra pixel? It's technically a dual four megapixel camera. That's true. Which turns it into so, a ultra pixel. Yeah, that's a hard. four megapixel camera. Yeah, but, <laughs> but but along with this phone, which has an aluminum unibody design. And everyone was thought we were wild for calling it an iPhone. Um, they announced a bunch of other stuff like Sense Five, HTC Zoe, Blink Feed, Sense TV. You know, they announced all these sort of categories of things that go into Sense or the phone in general. Uh, they showed some accessories, how this new camera works. It was it was quite the event. There was also a simultaneous event going on in London. London actually got Peter Chow, by the way. We got HTC's VP of Americas or something like that. <laughs> you get the B team. Yeah, I feel feel like we got a little snubbed on that. Uh, but overall, you know, Dave and I played with the phone, got some video of it. Uh, it's it's crazy fast. I mean, you play with it, swipe between anything, it jumps around. It's uh, it's really nice to look at, hold a hand. It's crazy light. We we actually got to you know play with some that weren't attached to stands that you can walk away. With. Some guy actually you know pulled one out, let us hold it. We compared it to like a Razer M. Even feels lighter than that, better in hand. I think that 4.7 inch is sort of a nice spot. I, like five inches beyond feels a little big. This thing just feels really great in hand. Um, that whole metal body feels really nice. Uh, display looks gorgeous. The viewing angles on it are crazy. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to keep ranting on this. I just want to get your guys' thoughts in general since you guys were watching it from afar. Just see what you think. Carrier stuff, no Verizon, obviously. Do you like the look of it? Anything surprise you? What did you see from Sense 5 that you like or dislike? Anything. So, Tim, just kind of start on what, what your initial thoughts are after seeing yesterday's whole event. Um, just initial reaction was, wow, that device looks really good. Wow, that device UI is really horrible. Um <laughs> That's about it. Um, I mean, I could go on forever. I really don't want to get too much into it. I, you know, since I wasn't lucky enough to go over there and hold it, you know, I mean, it looks great. I don't know if it feels great. Um, I guess I'll just take your word for it. But um, <laughs> I can't wait to get one in my hands, and then I will really know um, if this will be, like, my next device, whether I have to get it on AT&T or whatever. I don't know. I just want it. So, but... Initial reactions, I am happy, but Sense 5 is no good. <laughs> yeah, Ron, did you have any thoughts? Yeah, pretty much pretty much the same. I, you know, I, kind of, I still kind of prefer the 1X look, the pre previous generation of their designs. I think this looks really good. The software, I have no idea what they're doing. Um, I, I haven't, out of all the skins, I mean, I don't know if you can pick a favorite skin. They're all kind of crappy in their own ways, and Sense has become more and more bloated. And last year, they kept on talking up how they had, uh, you know, made things simpler and everything else like that. And in yeah. some ways, they certainly are making things simpler with this version of 
sense, but in other ways they're just overcomplicating it and changing Android in their own ways. And uh, I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure about it. It could be, it could be a good thing. I mean, in, in, in you know, the grand scheme of things, is going to make a big difference. Probably not. Um, so, but it, it is interesting. You know, they're making, they're not just you know doing light flourishes with their own widgets and stuff like that. They're changing the way that Android looks and feels in a lot more significant way with this with these moves especially especially with uh blink feed and stuff like that that's you know it's really changed the way that android looks and feels and, and works um so I, I think it's a i think it's an interesting move for them i don't i don't know if it's enough or if it's even compelling for people to say hey you know what, i'm gonna pick up an htc phone assuming that you're on one of the three carriers in the u.s that it's actually available on but it looks like an iphone ron People are gonna pick it up automatically. It does it's, look like an iPhone. It's gonna sell itself. Kinda. It, there are there are a lot of stylistic differences. For example, the iPhone in white looks like crap, and this actually looks pretty nice in the white slash silver, whatever you want to call that. Yeah, I suppose you could say that. I don't necessarily agree. Like I've always, I've never really minded um, the iPhone look per se, like hardware wise. You know, I mean, it's actually, you know, it's a nice little device. You know, and I emphasize little, little. but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's. I mean, it looks pretty. It looks snazzy, and you know, I mean, I don't know. I think HTC is kind of like on the right track, almost. You know, hardware wise. Um, yeah, yeah. And hardware looks. Uh, yeah, it's not my favorite, but it looks good. But the, it's the software. I'm just. I don't. I don't know. I mean, Kellen, Kel, you were there. What did, what did they talk about in terms of like you know when they were talking about blink feed and stuff like that? Did they talk up why that is something that's important. Well, first of all, I don't know what the hell blink feed even means. Is it like? Blink and you'll miss. I, I don't really know. Yeah, blink and you'll miss everything. Blink that and you'll, you'll miss want. everything. Um, so they, they talked about how they don't want to just do. They, they it almost sounded like they really don't want to do just another light skin, slightly differentiate. They wanted to go crazy with it. They want to do something so different, basically change what Android is. I think. Like I don't even know that they want you to know that this is Android. I don't even know that they mentioned during the press conference that this thing is Android at all. They didn't mention Jelly Bean, I don't. Think. Or any well, that. because they were afraid to announce that it was only 4.1.2 and not even Android 4.2. And also, did they mention that an update's coming for that? Because I, I was shocked when I was like 4.1. What's the deal? Yeah. So th the whole event in general was kind of different than most, right? I mentioned this in my Reddit. They didn't talk specs whatsoever. I don't even know they mentioned what the phone was. You kind of had to find, figure that out. I mean, I mean, sorry, the display was. You had to figure all that stuff out afterwards. They didn't talk RAM and battery life and all that crap. So they were going away from that. They wanted you to focus on these Zoe video things and boom sound or whatever the hell their new sound thing is. And then this Blink Feed stuff. And they didn't talk about Android. They didn't talk about any of that stuff. They want you to just think of HTC as a maker of phones and this is what you get is these cool feature sets and add-ons and all this stuff. Like they didn't, they really, it, it really was like, they didn't want you to know it was an Android phone. It's just an HTC one, which they called the greatest phone ever made. No, the best phone ever made, by the way, they said that like three times on stage. So but I don't know. It was interesting to, to see where they kind of went with it. Most of the time, you know, we talk about, well, it's upgradable to jelly bean or it's running this and here's the battery life. And they didn't do any of that stuff. So it's interesting. Eric, I'll let you weigh in, and then I have a bunch more thoughts. <clears throat> I just the one thing that bugs me from yesterday or from the event was, is that how they said it? It's Zoe. Mm. I I assumed it was Zoe. I'm pretty sure. I mean, mean they, you they, say it a million times at the press event. What's... Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's Zoe. I think it's no, Zoe. it's Zoe. It's from the yeah, it's from the Greek word Zoe means yeah. life. Huh. Well, that's, that's, that's weird. pretty silly too. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like that's they, the thing. I don't know why they did that. <laughs> they made they made they made up all these buzzwords to just like throw in, you know, so they could talk it up. You know, like you were saying, instead of talking about specs, they made up all these little words for like boom the fancy sound. things that they're yeah, boom sound and <laughs> welcome and, hey, welcome to marketing one hundred and one, Eric. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I, know. I buzzwords. Mean, it, I, I mean, do kind of like boom sound a lot, though. I really <laughs> emphasize the boom. Boom. Here comes the boom sound. Here comes the boom. Game day bucket. Hey, <laughs> shit. Well, Game never mind. Go boom sound. <laughs> boom. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I was really excited for this phone, and it. I mean, it's just I can't be excited for this because I'm on Verizon. <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna be able to have it, and you don't I really want to get hyped, but it's not gonna happen. We can get into that later too. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, as far as Verizon is concerned with this thing and all that little pop-up of a red one and all that, who knows? I'm a little conspiracy going on in my head with that. 
I mean, I th- so we know there's a Verizon phone in the works called the DLX Plus. I don't know if you guys remember, I wrote that up like two weeks ago or something. So there is a new HTC Verizon phone in the pipeline. We just don't know when the hell that's coming out. So they have something. They're not just going to like cut ties with HTC. Yeah, it's still they're not completely stuff. shunning them. But so th- last week I sort of talked about this a little bit, and I'll talk more about it now since the phone's announced. But someone actually told me that Verizon passed on it because they don't think they can sell anything but Droid branded phones. Galaxy phones and iPhones. They don't necessarily think they could sell HCC's flagship known as the one unless they put a Droid brand or something on it. So I don't know if that's 100% true or not. Uh, so that could be partly why they didn't get it. But I just love that it's the one. I mean, it's, it's, kind, it's kind of a cool name. It's the it's one. Kind of, yeah, it's the, the one. It's kind of yeah. neat. I mean, I mean yeah. I think they called it the best phone ever made. They didn't even is it? Is it the best phone ever made? I don't think so. I mean, it's it's a cool phone. So I wrote up this right this really lengthy initial impressions piece, oh, yeah. and and I, <laughs> apparently I came off as sort of trashing on the phone. I don't really no. feel like I trashed on. It. So I tra- I trashed on Sense Five and mm-hmm. Blink, and Blink Feed. Okay, so yeah, if, because if you, they deserve to be trashed on. Yeah. So so if you guys miss this, Blink Feed is it's Flipboard with a clock on top, an ugly minimal clock, by the way, in my opinion. That's stuck on your front page, your front number one home screen, and I couldn't get it to go away. Apparently, Engadget figured out a way to disable it, or somebody told them you could disable it. I went into the sort of page editor where you can add home panels and widgets and all that, and it would not let me delete Blink Feed. So if there's this, maybe a setting somewhere you can turn it off, otherwise you can't. So that's annoying for one. Other than that, all it is is a Flipboard. It's a news aggregator twitter facebook all that stuff it also will show you calendar items but we asked if it could put um like missed calls or texts or you know other little boxes that would notify you things like that and they said no it doesn't do that you can just see <laughs> they said no all that stuff's still in the notification bar and i said well calendar reminders are in the notification bar too and you put those in here it's just it seems like all it is, is a news aggregator and social feed thing and a lot of people don't really care about twitter and facebook they don't need that on their home page no. Um, you, so you can add other pages you can do widgets with and run as you normal Android stuff. And you can set those as your default, which makes it so when you hit home, you don't actually get this blink feed thing. Uh, but beyond that, Sense 5 looks just sort of like other senses. It's been toned down a little bit. Textures are a little more flattened. It's not so bubbly and glossy and 3D E. <laughs> Technical term there. It works. But, That's fine. But course. it's it's still terrible to navigate. The gallery's still awful. Um, so I don't want to again sound like I'm trashing it because Sense Five and Blink are the only two things I really didn't like. Everything else about this film was pretty awesome. The camera was fast. The Zoe's thing is actually really cool. So Zoe, when you take a picture, it records like a four or five second, maybe it's like a four second clip of whatever you're taking a picture of, and then these little mini video clips. You can edit them later, create little highlight videos. It does some really cool software stuff. You can create action shots and delete frames to create really cool, I don't know. It's one of those things where I'll have to get my hand again for a review and really go through it. Uh, the body of the device feels really awesome. You know, it, it's a, gonna be a really, really amazing phone, but it's other than Sense 5 and Blink Feed and it's not coming to Verizon. The other thing though is the navigation. Only a home button and only a back button. Um, and then in between those is an HTC logo, which is not That's a button. That's not clickable. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not a button. It's just an HTC logo. So it's a little confusing. To get to Google now, you have to long press on home, which I know you do on some other phones as well. If you double tap it, it gets you to a task switcher. And their task switcher just looks like a set of cards laid out next to each other on a screen. It's really, really weird. I mean, I know their other version had those, like, 3D page turning cards, and people didn't like that. I like that better than this new version. Um, and then the back button you can map to be a long press for menu, although I couldn't get it to work half the time, so it was sort of weird too. So navigation's a bit weird, but I mean, otherwise the phone's awesome. I can't wait to get it again and play with it and take pictures with this ultra pixel camera and use this Zoe stuff, which is cool. The boom sound stuff with the front speakers is kind of awesome. You know, like I in the post I wrote up how I joked with like three or four guys at the thing about how you no longer have to do the cup behind the your phone to watch a video to get the sound project the sounds like right in your face and they put two speakers on there and they did some cool stuff with like noise cancellation while you're making calls and while you're or recording video and all that stuff they did some really nice stuff but i don't know overall i thought it was awesome i just don't like sense 5 but luckily it's android you can cover that up with a third-party launcher so 
I don't know. What else do you guys think? Seems like there's a ton to talk about here. Did you, guys, oh. did, you guys, did you guys see all the Zoe stuff? It's really yeah. cool. I mean, this guy was walking through some like just photo editing stuff that's on that's built onto the phone, and uh, like you can like say you're taking a picture in a busy place of some like somebody, and there's moving action in the background or some guy photo bombing you. You can like automatically just have the photo bomber gone, and you don't have to like select it. It just automatically knows. Although I hope there's a manual way to do that too, but. <laughs> You know things like that in there. Um, the Zoe's. If you say you're at a day in the park with the dogs, Tim, and you take like 30 pictures of them with Zoe's, it'll create a highlight reel with music and themes and all this goofy stuff. I don't know. It's just kind of cool. I know they're can't wait not to use that. No. <laughs> well, the only question I have is if it's taking all these photos. You know, because I say when you take one photo, they like record like four or five seconds of video or something at the same time. How much space are we talking? Is this going to eat up, you know? Well, luckily not much because it's only four megapixels. So <laughs> you could probably take about a billion to fill up 32 gigs of internal. That is You're true. You're good to go. Only four megapixels. <laughs> Although I didn't, you know, I didn't have a chance to look at what size pictures were, but since <clears> it's like a dual four megapixel ultra pixel thing, I don't know if that does mean bigger size pictures or what the hell that means. Uh, but you can turn the Zoe thing off. There's like a little button on the yeah. side of the camera that you can just toggle that off. Um, it takes HDR video, which I believe is a first for the industry. It's kind of cool. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or is like somebody you know, else announced that? Some, somebody else doing that? Yeah. Probably, probably little Lumia or something. The um, what am I excited for? Xperia eh, Z yeah. has that. What does the Xperia, Xperia Z? Yeah. Uh, that would make sense. Of course they do. I like them. And look, they did it with a 13 megapixel camera, not a four megapixel camera. Industry first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but they don't have ultra pixels. So That's right. That's awesome. So yeah, the, the event was also filled, like you said, with a bunch of buzzwords like ultra pixel and Zoe and blink feed and boom sound. And like you, I guess like you said, that's marketing 101. They got to sell it, right? They can't sell gigahertz processors and nope. all that garbage. They got to sell features. Because that's what everyone else is trying to sell. You know, you got everyone in the old spec wars. And just trying to outdo each other. Why not just take uh, take the high road? <laughs> just make up shit. Yeah, and just make up words like Zoe and Ultra Pixel. Like, like, Zoe's a real okay. word. It's just my so, English word. Well, <laughs> so you know, I like. Um, there's a few things I'm really kind of excited about, and that's the. Uh, don't laugh at me, bro. Uh, I really like front-facing speakers. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So the power button is on the top left. Top left. Yes. Okay, I don't like that. Um, but that, you know, HTC's done that forever, so I wasn't. Yeah, I was gonna say Minecraft but, yeah. top left. But the what's cool they though is that that doubles as an IR sensor. Did you right. install that for the Sense TV stuff? Yeah. So, oh, okay. yeah. It's like like you. Yeah, it's yeah. still a button you could press, but it's also an IR sensor, which I I don't know. I thought that was kind of cool. The TV stuff could be fun. Anyway, keep That's going. Not bad. Display, uh, Super 1080p, baby, 4.7. I'm really stoked to actually get my hands on like a smaller phone. I, I'm sorry, Note 2. Uh, cult <laughs> members that I have created, but uh, I wouldn't mind just going back to like a smaller device for a little bit, something that fits in my tight jeans, you know what I mean? Just something I can carry around. So 4.7 1080p, super excited for that. Mm -hmm. yes. In the comments of the story the other day, some guy was like, yeah, I don't like, this. I don't like the one because it's too small. I was like, wow, 4.7 is the yeah. new too small these days. <laughs> It's kind of crazy. Jeez, People yeah. are so used to five inches and above. Well, we did a poll like a few weeks ago and said, "What's the optimal screen size?" And five inches one, I think, didn't it? Uh, I think. Well, uh, I think it was like I thought it was like maybe a four point something, a little I higher. Was four point eight because that's the yeah, uh, Galaxy. Four point eight. That's three. Somebody pull it up. I'll pull it up. I think it was five. Anyway. Um. But yeah. Either way. So I think. I think we're getting there. I mean, like other people have said, we've kind of reached the. Um, you know, like a brick wall of the specs and all that. You can't get any faster. So they're focusing more on the software aspect. And maybe to us, they might have taken like the wrong turn in a couple of parts. But it's something new. I like new. I don't mind new. And like Helen said, you can always just throw on a Nova launcher or whatever and get rid of all that crap. I mean, that's probably what I'll do the first second I have it. So we'll see. Yeah, because the phone, it's, it's insanely powerful. I mean, that new Snapdragon 600 processor is a beast. It's gonna. It's it's crazy, and it's one point seven gigahertz. That's not. That's not anything to scoff at. Definitely not. Someone renamed themselves Tim's Note Two. Yeah, the it's over. It's over. It's over, Tim. <laughs> Our relationship is done. 
That's hilarious. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Tim, Tim's leaving the 5.5 inch note. Uh, what else did they talk about? Uh, yeah, like you said, the front-facing speakers, that's kind of cool. I was that's definitely a cool. fan of that. They had this little room set up that was the boom sound room. And they, like, you know, it was all like... It was they should have just called it the boom room. The boom yeah. room. That would have been so much better. Oh, that would have been great. Oh, much yeah, perky. Boom, boom much room. perkier. Oh, and then, and then with the HTC One, you can turn any room into a boom room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Random side note, there's a strip club down the street for me called the boom boom room. Not kidding. All right, that's probably why they didn't do it then. I've it would have got sued. Yeah, I've actually been there once. <laughs> they have metal detectors. It was scary. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so do you want to talk about this not going to Verizon? A, a lot of people were yeah. really, really disappointed in this. Well, we kind of touched on it. I mean, what we think that there's something else in the works for Verizon. And, you know, I don't know. Is there much else to say? Well, yeah, so. I, that doesn't excite me, though. Unless you got a quote from Brenda Rainey from, uh, from Verizon saying why they don't have HTC, um, what do you got for me? Well, it's not that. It's just looking back at history, you have HTC's flagship, and then you have the stepchild that comes to Verizon. You know, you have the One X, and then you have the incredible 4G or the DNA. You know, it just hey, for some reason no stepchild though. Yeah, come on, that's a flagship. I mean, but it it, did, it didn't re it didn't get the same love and attention that the one X did. It's it, just it, it didn't because Verizon was the only one pimping it. HTC was like, we threw all of our marketing money into the one or something that's like true. that. Because the I mean the DNA is a beast. It's a nice phone. Mm -hmm. Like I pulled it out the other day because it got an update, and I'm I kind of want to use it again. Although I should probably send it back to Verizon. It is there, <laughs> but it's, it's 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 a really nice phone. But there's yeah. a few things that kind of irk me about that phone. But I mean, yeah. Okay. See, it's just it's wow. the little things like that, you know. Yeah. It just whenever whenever an HTC phone comes to Verizon, it's not what everyone else gets for some reason. It's not the dream phone that you were hoping it was. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that but that phone doesn't exist either. I mean, it's not like there's an alternative on Verizon or any carrier that you're like, oh, that doesn't have flaws that make me. Well, lie. If I that's could not have necessarily that phone, true. If I could have that phone that they announced on Tuesday on Verizon with LTE. I'd be done. I'd yeah. be done for two years. I'd be locked I kinda, up. I kind of okay. feel. I kind of feel the same way. I think the the one is the one for me. Um, it's <laughs> sure. I haven't had my hands on it, but man, it looks sweet. And like I said, I mean, if it gets like S off, and you can just throw on Cyanogen mod or something like that, and have LTE, yeah. I'm sorry. Like that's it right there. The epitome of uh, sweet specs. You got just, your stock Android and all that. I just cringe at the design features that they're going to do on this, you know, it's going to be black and red and it's not going to look exactly like the one and I just yeah. I'm I'm fearing everything that Verizon's going to do when they put their hands on this phone. But if we got okay, imagine this. <laughs> imagine you had a, like that red imagine. one that we saw kind of, you know, posted on their global site. Yeah. And yeah. just on the back, you know, it had like a black 4G LTE logo and a Verizon logo. Like, I think I would be all right with that. As long as now it doesn't say Verizon on the front, like a black 4G LTE logo on the back, and just red one would be dope. It'll See, that's the problem, because they're going to scrape off the little yep. HTC logo yep. and put the 4G exactly. right there. No, they're just going to put Verizon right there. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> now, if it was just the little everybody. check mark, I wouldn't mind, but I know they're going to stick with Oh, it's not going to be Verizon. the damn check mark. Come on. They're not yeah. classy enough for that. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be great if they started making the check mark the uh, thing that holds the notification line, so you have to stare at the Verizon logo anytime you have a notification. Oh god! god. Just imagine they, that they would do that. I mean, I'm sure they mm -hmm. got a guy in a dark back room, marketing guy, just going, <laughs> just, "What can we do right to this now. phone?" Just staring at it. <laughs> yeah, I want to be that guy. He probably gets paid like a nice little salary. <laughs> oh yeah, he does. Sure he does. And he's he like, "Yeah, watch me just fit some logos on this bad boy and make six figures. I'm gonna be the boss." <laughs> oh yeah, you know how much press that guy got? I mean, we bitched about the Note 2's branded home button, and then the Galaxy Tab 10 one with the giant 4 GLT logo on the back. That guy got all sorts of press. He probably got it a. It takes range. him like 30 minutes to like strategically strap logos onto that phone. He just walks out. He's like, "All right, I'm good for you know oh, the next quarter." Button? Brand it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but we did run a poll, and we said, "Are you guys buying the HTC One?" And sixty-four percent of you said no. Uh, Twenty percent said yes if it was going to Verizon, and another sixteen percent said yes, just in general, buying this bad boy. So that's kind of that's not good. That's not a good sign. If you have sixty-six percent of I forget yeah. the number of many people, it's a few thousand saying yeah. just flat out no. That's a bad sign for HTC. Yeah. 
So yeah, I mean, whether you know that's because of the software they put on it or something like that, or because our readers are mostly Verizon customers. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but it says yes if on Verizon. So say you had, yeah, you, it would true. still be forty six percent saying just no. That's almost fifty percent. One out of two people. That's still not good. And whether it's because they're waiting for what Samsung has coming up, that might be it. Or Motorola. I mean, our readers are we're forward thinkers, you know. So we know what's around the corner. And, um, and we're like, all yeah. closet Motorola fans just waiting for them to do something really good so we can give them our money again. Pretty I, much. I think so. everyone is sort of a closet Motorola fan. And it's because the original droid just got us all. We it's all are beast. waiting for them to just bring back the magic. Yep. Hopefully they do it. Yeah. New phone. So we'll see. Yeah. Either way. Uh, any last thoughts on the HTC One? Any random notes or anything? I'm trying to think of anything weird happened at the press event. Yeah, did anything funny happen? Did you see anyone? Blah, blah, blah. No geek guys type of shit. Dennis Rodman, definitely not. <laughs> was not there. No, no celebrity sightings. Uh, I think HTC needs to hire like a T-Mobile girl or something that's there just for them to be there. <laughs> they should hire the T-Mobile girl. <laughs> they, they, they should hire the T-Mobile girl. <laughs> I was going to... Yeah, never mind. Uh, I was going to make a joke about they're both dying companies, but I probably shouldn't go. Uh, not about the Boom Boom Room? Not a, well, we could throw a Boom Boom Room in there, too. Uh, you know, it was just a classic press event. There was nothing. There was no like technical difficulties, although they did get started, what, like 15, 20 minutes late? It seemed like a long time. That's pretty yeah, normal. they're like, let's sync up with UK and then not have it sync up at all. Let's yeah. do that. I don't, I don't For a couple of minutes. I don't think there was any booze on the premises, which is kind of weird. I mean, I know it was 10 o'clock in the morning, but come on, mimosas or something? <laughs> mimosas, Bloody Marys, come on, HCC. They did have food. Dave and I didn't eat any of it. We were busy. Uh, busy looking at things. Busy disappearing, not doing nothing. <laughs> you did. No, that, was, that was because the LTE in there was terrible because everyone had their LTE yeah. uploading stuff. No. The, the, the press Wi-Fi wasn't that bad, which is sort of surprising. Uh, oh, we did ask. I said, "Is there wireless charging in this device?" And the guy just said, "Nope, that's a Verizon thing." I thought that was what? Yeah, I thought that was sort of odd. He, <laughs> yeah, he flat out said, "No, that's a Verizon thing." And he actually did mention that. He didn't say when it comes to Verizon, but he said something about like the Verizon version of the phone. And t Dave and I both went, "Oh, so it's coming to Verizon?" You know, nonchalantly trying to get him to keep going. And he's like, "Oh, well, uh, I don't know." You know, he's yeah. See, well, himself. that very interesting. That comment right there kind of makes me think that there's going to be one. You know. Just yeah. offhand saying that, oh, Verizon's going to take care of that. That's yeah. kind of that's a little bit interesting. He he did make sort of an offhand comment. Mm -hmm. um, and most of the guys at these events are they're like regional HCC reps, so they usually sort of know what they're talking about. And I, I, again, I'm not saying that a Verizon version is definitely coming, but he just did sort of nonchalantly nope. that out there. It's confirmed. Confirmed. <laughs> Exclusive. <laughs> You're going to hear it first. That is interesting. Uh, I wonder. I wonder if. Uh, they made a deal with Verizon to say, hey, we'll, we'll only do uh, wireless charging on phones on your network. Because I think the 8, doesn't the 8X do uh, wireless charging too? Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so that might be something where they just said, hey, you know what, just to make your phones a little bit more appealing on your network, we'll go ahead and do that with you guys for however long. Is it Aww, only, is it only Verizon's? Is Verizon's 8X the only one that's wireless charging? Is it AT&T? Doesn't AT&T have that phone too? Or mm -hmm. not? We're talking out of our... Can't confirm that. We're just, nothing's I'm, confirmed. I'm clicking. I'm trying to think, what else has wireless charging that's not on Verizon? Well, the Nexus 4, but that's not a carrier phone. No. The, the Optimus G, I can't remember. Well, the Galaxy Note 2 is on a few carriers. It doesn't have wireless charging. What? Didn't we talk about this? No, you have to, like, they were supposed to sell a backplate kit. And they yeah, they never did. did. All right. Galaxy S3? No. Nope. I mean, you can hack all of those and paste some stuff on and wires and all that fun. Works for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know what's up with wireless charging. Yeah, the everyone's saying the Lumia, and yeah, that Lumia definitely does, and that's on AT&T. But... Nokia's kind of led the charge with wireless charging. Yeah, and the, but that's not an HTC phone anyway, so it doesn't matter. Someone says we're biased with Verizon and AT&T. We're like, yeah, no, duh. Everyone is. <laughs> <laughs> Why wouldn't we be? AT&T sucks. Sorry, I like coverage. I, <laughs> I mean, know? yeah, I don't... Wherever I, don't, I, I go. Just, I really don't mind AT&T anymore because their coverage has gotten better. I mean, it's if you go into a, a major city, it still gets bogged down, but like in Portland, our coverage is awesome. Yeah. I do sort of think it's um, not not like a 
a death sentence for the one to not be on Verizon, but it can't be good. I mean, you cannot not not be on you know the biggest carrier in the U.S. I mean, this is what happened last that. year with the One X. Like, it came out and they did the press conference, and everybody's like, "Man, this is this is a pretty good phone. You guys did a really good job." And then it just you you get overtaken by Samsung. The damn thing. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I have a I mean, bad feeling that whenever the S4 comes, it's going to crush whatever HTC just put yeah, out, basically. It's going I mean, to it's crush just... whatever anyone thinks about doing, yeah. Even yeah. the X phone, like, it's not going to stand a chance to the Galaxy S4. No way. Samsung's like, so hot right now. Yeah, once again, HTC no, made a, right. a pretty decent phone, but they did they failed to make the splash big enough to get Ron themselves back, back yeah, in I mean, the game. I mean, they stood, on, they stood on stage and said 185 plus carriers. It was a huge number, and there was all these carriers. And yeah, the one except of the, Verizon. Yeah, except one of the biggest in the entire world, nowhere to be found. Sad. Yeah. Sad. In case well, anybody's wondering, it looks like the 18G version of 8X does not have wireless charging, as far ooh, as I can tell. Ooh, Boom. Verizon. Confirmed. So we know that there is some type of exclusive agreement between HTC and Verizon when it comes to wireless charging. Which is interesting. Done and done. That is weird. That so is that guy, actually that weird. like noteworthy. Yeah. That's weird. It's kind of noteworthy, actually. It's, Maybe it's Samsung Note 2 worthy? <laughs> Exclusive. Um, <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> I think that's the uh, best joke of the night. Let's no, move that's... on. Moving on. <laughs> Unless you guys have any final, final thoughts on the one. No, we've been talking about it for 30 minutes. I'm yeah, over it. We'll talk about it next week. We have. Uh, let's talk about Google Glass. Everybody watched that video today. It was awesome. Yeah, it, it was, was awesome. a pretty cool video. So Google oh. Glass video, oh, sorry, um, kind of shows what the UI could look like. Did they actually say, like, this is what it looks like or this is nope. what it could look like in the room? And it wasn't yeah. as, like, out there and crazy as that initial video they did a year ago. This was more little notification thing up there in the window. Ask for directions. Say okay. What do you say? Okay, Google, and then tell yeah. it to do stuff. Yep. I think it was really cool. Although, I mean, the thing is, like, why are they releasing that? That was pretty much what we thought it was already going to be. I mean, this is more like a um, kind of like a refined version of what we saw previously. But everyone was like, "This isn't new." I mean, this is what we were hoping for in the first place. I'm not going to spend fifteen hundred dollars on something that doesn't already do this. I think it was probably an update on. Um, progress made maybe you know they started off with this big vision and went yeah there's no way in hell we're gonna do that and so yeah, they've they've simplified to where they think they can probably get that's that was sort of my take on it i think it's just so yeah okay that definitely makes sense but at the same time it's bs i mean so like what you're going to see i think it's just completely different not completely different but sure you're going to see that but it's like a little screen in the like top of your eye that it's not going to be it's not going to look that good i can't imagine that it'll look that good i don't know there's plenty of people who have worn them. I haven't, so I don't know. But I, I'm just like I'm skeptical <clears throat> of what to expect from Project Glass and Google Glass and all that. Yeah, Eric, what did you take away from that? You wrote up that story. Well, there. the video came with a a whole website, so it looks like what you were talking about, Kellen. They're kind of getting everything simplified. They're kind of getting it towards a more marketable area. You know, they're kind of like this is what we're going to be focusing on. More realistic. And yeah, you know, the, the website's full of pretty pictures and really wide line, landscape, high pixel, you know, which the... Didn't they have a new logo, the, too, that said glass, and it was, like, all... Oh, new. yeah, with the little, like, side A, you know, so... Um, and then they launched their project, their uh, contest as well today. You know, yeah, talk about on. that. How awesome is that? <laughs> yeah, so if you tweet at or Google Plus at, I don't know if there's a verb for that yet, um, at Google and say hashtag if I had glass and tell them you know what you would do you get entered into this contest and then if you win the contest you get the uh, you get the prize of paying Google fifteen hundred dollars to be included into the glass explorers program and you have to you have to fly to New York or Los Angeles or San Francisco to pick your pick it up I don't know if they're gonna cover that but probably. damn they can't even send it first class mail to you <laughs> nope Jeez. yep they were they, Cheap they said there was like a a special receiving event that you had to you had to attend oh that sounds kind of badass I I wouldn't pass that up if I won that I'd be like hell yeah like a party in my honor just because I'm awesome no, no because if you win you have to pay fifteen hundred dollars like it's like yeah, a penalty you, they're for not winning footing almost. your bill you have, you still have to pay to get into the program you just no, no I, you get I your name think, on the list I still think that's pretty awesome whatever I mean. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> uh, and then, okay. If people want to invest that much money into Google Glass, 
God help them, do whatever, have fun with that. Um, I will wait for it to uh, be a little bit more, you know, cheaper for the everyday person. And then I have Dave Cover in the chat saying that uh, this promo was for like normal humans and not tech freaks like me. I'm sorry, like who, who's gonna be watching this? I mean, not I don't know about that. Normal humans aren't watching this in the moment, and plus they weren't even doing normal human activities yeah, in the exactly. promo. They're jumping out of planes, like doing tra- ballerina stuff. stuff. Hey, give me a break. I mean, this is like a bunch of just Google employees showing off their toys. That's a bunch of BS. <laughs> it hey, kind of pisses me off, but whatever. Tell us how you really feel about that, Tim. Google, a bunch of snobs. <laughs> <laughs> Z swings his corona by the screen. Yep. <laughs> 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 I thought it looked awesome. I I hope it looks that way. And you I was kind of excited when I saw the video. That, that got me pumped. I'm not gonna lie. It was nice, but I mean, nice. yeah, a couple of years down the road when we have them, it'll be nice. But and they showed all. off that they showed off on the website more so than the, the video because the video didn't talk really about the design, but how um, you know they really kind of emphasized how all of this is just a frame, and then they had a picture where um, they had like these clip-on sunglasses that you could like attach to the Google the glass but still have your you know notification thing up there so you know I think they're they're starting to really you know get practical with it and see oh well people are going to want to use these sunglasses and it looks like they're going to have accessories to go along with it I don't think I'd be impressed if they went so far to have prescription lenses that you could swap in and out but um, I don't know interesting what kind of accessories besides sunglasses? Actually, I saw a Marcus Brownlee tweet today that he was imagining a battery pack like on the top of his head, like <laughs> like connected to the thing. I thought that was funny. Well, you can maybe have like a flashlight attachment or something like that. You can go like You're going lurking, lurking. Lurking. Hey, if you go like through the lurking through caves and stuff like that. I mean, like spelunking. any normal person would do. Go cave crawling. <laughs> spelunking. There you go. Spelunking. Okay. Spelunking. Damn it. Gosh, haven't you seen Batman Begins? Yeah. Have you, have you, have you been spelunking, Tim? Come on. Uh, yeah, I just, I just got back from spelunking moments ago. Ron, Ron, did you have a chance to watch that video at all? Or to look I at did. the glass? What do you think? Yeah. Um, I, I think it looks really cool. Um, it's still questionable exactly how you'll, like, you know, like they were saying, like, there were some people, like, just talking at it or whatever, and... If you're in like a uh, air balloon, I doubt that you're going to be able to really say anything intelligible with the wind and everything else going on there. So yeah, that too. Some of that, you know, some of that stuff. Like, yeah, just dealing with, you know, trying to talk. Just to normal, normal human stuff. Totally normal. Do that. That's how I get to work. It's a long commute, but it's worth it. <laughs> um, so you know, stuff, you know, the input and stuff like that, and also just like when you're on the street and stuff like that, I doubt you're going to be doing that. Um, you know, while you're like walking in the street, it's already weird enough. Um, you know, talking at your phone by yourself. So um, that stuff's interesting. I think some of the stuff that they have, like the different colors, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, they have like the different color headsets. That seems a little seems a little too early to be showing off. Like, hey, we've got all these colors because like you can't even yeah. buy them, and <clears throat> like so that. Some of that stuff's a little weird. So it almost it almost felt like as I was scrolling through the page, it almost felt like you know one of those mock-ups that people just make. Um, of products that they want to see, um, so I don't I don't know. I, th- I think it's interesting. I think it could possibly be the next step in how we interact with um, how we interact with the world around us. Instead of using a smartphone, using something like that, um, whether it's you know a combination of that and watch and then smartphone when you absolutely need it. I think it's cool for that kind of stuff. The directions thing was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and I imagine some of that. I think the cool thing is going to be see where we start seeing some of these projects come together. You know, so Google does come out with a watch, which I believe has been rumored several times. If they have stuff, you know, wearable accessories, whether it's a watch or glasses or whatever, and then you integrate that with like your Google Car, where you've got all that stuff, Google Now stuff shooting on your windshield and everything else like that. When we start seeing all those pieces come together in this larger piece of your life, besides just this one device where it's showing up everywhere, and you start seeing your content and the things that you actually use everywhere. That's where I think this is. This stuff's gonna be pretty cool. I don't know if glasses are gonna take off. I, I mean, they're gonna be. If they're doing the dev kit for fifteen hundred, it's not. The price isn't gonna come down a lot. So it's still gonna be a luxury item no matter what. Mm-hmm. Um, and I doubt they're gonna be doing contracts or anything else like that or subsidies to try and bring that down. So 
Um, so it's still going to be a luxury item. So I imagine if anybody does anything, they'd rather do a watch than something they wear on their face. That seems a lot less likely. So, but it's boo, it's boo smart watches. But I'm <laughs> I'm over the smart watch phase. It's the future. That's because yeah. you, you had a metal watch. Metal watch. That's why. <laughs> okay, maybe. But um, <laughs> so going beyond the, going beyond the smart watches real quick. But I thought it was funny how you brought up the navigation part of the Google Glass because was that not possibly the most dangerous thing one could do with their life? <laughs> is drive down like a street of New York City in through cabs and while trying to like look at a little navigation screen like that's that's not a good idea or or the, or the gonna, snowboarding with that like yeah. like the idea that would even be remotely accurate you know, that's not that's not even that dangerous considering you know as long as you're kind of aware of your surroundings and you're going downhill that's fine but biking but like yeah, down New York, York City street don't do it's, it please. That's a death oh my gosh what was that what was that biking there was that biking movie Premium Rush. Oh, it was yes. yeah, imagine it was that good. with Google Glass. Oh, that'd be kind of badass. Huh? Maybe, maybe I would have actually go to watch it then if it had yeah. been. <laughs> I wouldn't get me into the theater for that. Nah. Oh come on. I don't know. I could see I could see Google I could see Google hype beasting this pretty hard, you know. It kinda right. seems like a lot of companies are moving towards the wearable accessories at this point, you know, especially with the rumors of the iWatch or yep. whatever. You know, so I think the fact that they have gotten to it first and have a decent amount of press behind it, I think they're gonna, you know, try and make this work as well as they as they can. Which kind of brings us into our next topic. <clears throat> Certainly yeah. does. If That's they were to, segue. yeah, if they were to sell these bad boys, Google retail stores. Who was the WSJ Wall Street Journal reported that first? I think yeah. maybe. And no. they said that by the it wasn't them. Was it like they confirmed it later? Somebody else. They confirmed it. it. Oh, okay, okay. But it was uh, who? Oh man. It was nope, nope. BGR sourced another site, but it doesn't matter either way. <laughs> either way, Google retail stores maybe the end of this year. Is that what they said? 2013. Yeah. So if we get retail stores, we could obviously see Nexus phones, tablets, Google Glass, uh, accessories. I mean, they don't really have a lot of stuff to fill up an entire store right now. They got one phone, two tablets. We got a, Chromebooks. A bumper. Oh, I guess I guess we do got Chromebooks. I forget about those. We have the Google TVs. Next, we got the return of the Nexus Q. Google TVs. I mean, we, got, we got a whole bunch of fun stuff. <laughs> <It> looks <laughs> like it was uh, 9 to 5 Google that broke it. Okay. Oh, yes. Yes, the 9 to 5 network. Five That's correct. All right, so retail stores. What do you guys think about those? I'm, I'm down with that. I'm, I'm so down. I'm so down. I hope they hire the people that handle support on their... No, I don't. I hope they hire people <laughs> that handle support on their site. It's probably going to yeah. be on the Nexus Q support people. I Yeah, I just hope that it doesn't turn into some Android help shop where dumb people go with their smartphones to like get help or troubleshoot their problems. See, because, you know that's I, exactly what it's going to end up That's being. exactly what it's going to be. It's not going to no, be like, no, I'm going to hack your phone. I'll no, it won't. No, 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 not at all. Oh, because no, I when, I, when I first that. talked about it, I mentioned that, you know, Android support is the problem or the issue of the OEMs and not Google's, like, whatsoever, I don't think. Unless well, it shouldn't be. Yeah, I mean, you can't take, like, your Galaxy S4 or S3 into a Google store and get support. That would be dumb. Right. But if you get but, a Nexus, you exactly. should be able to. Exactly. The Nexus yeah. is okay, but, man, if you're buying a Nexus, just read up on that user well, manual or something like that. See, you know, don't then bother you're, Google. <laughs> you're drawing an arbitrary line because if, if somebody walks in with a Galaxy S3 and they heard that it runs Android, and they, oh, there's an Android store, and they walk in, and then Google says, oh, well, we can't help you, then that's that's not good for business. You don't want to start opening that. Uh, I don't I, agree. I, I don't just, agree. I just don't think it'll be a support store. It's not going to be like Apple stores. It's going to be just a retail shop to buy products, and then they'll probably tell you how to send it in for a fix or something. I don't know how they can do that because, like you said, if people start yeah. talking about it as being an Android thing, yeah, you can't bring your Galaxy phone in there. Yeah, and yeah, Cover. I don't want like a Google Genius Bar or anything like that. I think that's so obnoxious. But whatever. The Noodler I don't Bar. Know. Call it the Robot Lab. That's not bad. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be upset with that if they actually did helpful things there. I, you know, I can enjoy corny things every now and then. Oh, that's cute. That's corny. No, a Robot Lab. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> Uh, well, maybe maybe be nice, you know. Maybe you bring in your Galaxy S three and they put CM ten on there for you to fix it. You know, 
That'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of love the idea of like they have like their help bar, and if you bring in a phone that's not theirs, they just totally just put custom on it. Can you guys be like, like pull HTC you into a one room. with Sense Five? It sucks, and they're like, yeah, yeah sure, let's just, let's root this bad boy through awesome CM10. They're like, mm-hmm. we're not supposed to do this, but here, come on, we'll we'll show you how to we'll show you how to get things done, and they like pull the curtain back. And yeah, then, oh, it's no, up to the boom boom room. They just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they just automatically go. Oh yeah, I know what's wrong with your phone. Just hack it, wipe Bam, it clean, just <laughs> on the spot, unlock it, stock Android in. Yeah. So Google could be, retail could I'm be down. fun. Yeah. Who knows how many we'll see? It could be like one in New York, one in SF. Yeah. That's yeah. Who knows? I don't Unfortunately, know. Unfortunately, I don't know. If that moving works. back to San Francisco if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Should be fun though. Google's probably time they stepped into the retail universe. Actually, don't they have like a weird store somewhere in like they Germany have Chrome or something? Stores. They have Chrome stores and like some. Well, the outlets. one, the picture that you're thinking okay. of is the uh, Android store um, in Australia. It's they have, yeah, they have an Android, Android store. store. That's what I was thinking. Exactly. Of. It's done by a, a cell phone carrier. They have an Android Land, and that's like the oh, okay, that's the store about. that you're thinking. Kellen, send me to Android Land, please. <laughs> <laughs> Hands-on with everything. It'll be awesome. <laughs> Look out, with everything we've already seen. We already know. Nope. <laughs> Tato wants to ride the rides. <laughs> Tato wants to ride the buck to ride rides. Uh, how about NVIDIA Tegra 4 stuff? So they, we could do this quickly. They announced the Tegra 4 i which is their first integrated LTE processor. Um, so as you guys may or may not know, the Tegra chip hasn't been in many phones because it hasn't had an integrated LTE modem like all of Qualcomm's processors, which is why everything has a Snapdragon. So NVIDIA's finally got one with an integrated LTE processor. It's not the super phone Tegra 4 that they showed off at CES. It's like a slightly smaller version, though it should still be powerful. Although it's Cortex A9, it's not even Cortex A15, which is like the new standard. But it still should be good, at least powerful enough. They're not targeting super phones. They're targeting the mainstream, mid-range sort of smartphone market. It has a 60-core GPU. I don't know, it should be a good chip. I hope we see it, just so we can get something different. Not that Qualcomm's bad, because the Snapdragon processor is pretty damn good right now. But it'd be nice to have some options out there. I mean, we don't see Exynos on much either, so it'd be nice but to have But it doesn't support Verizon's LTE. Correct. Yeah, that is correct. I forgot about that. <laughs> no, no CDMA 2000 in this modem. So, yeah. Well, they're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Just like I mean, it seems like everything that isn't coming to Verizon, we automatically say, "Well, they're screwed." Like, <laughs> how do you how do you sell anything that doesn't go on Verizon? Yeah, if you're a manufacturer and you're trying to figure out which chip you want to put on, unless you're not bringing it over to Verizon. So HTC should be fucking They'll be working set. with these people. What's going on? <laughs> Well, well, well it's not necessarily that Verizon has this big ego. It's the fact that they were the first to get to LTE, and they have the the biggest, biggest network, biggest next generation network. Like, why are you not planning for that right now? Why are you not building for that? You know. Well, maybe they're not building for it. Well, maybe they want to build for it. <laughs> yeah, and CDMA two thousand sort of on the way out, right? Because once yeah. they get once they get LTE everywhere, it'll be VOLTE, and they'll slowly cut off their three G network. Or yeah, so that's gonna that's gonna be a while. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a few years. So, a few yeah. years? It's not even going to be a while, Eric. Come on, man. It's in, like, full 4G footprint by the end of next year. And yeah, then after- when will they actually cut off 3G? Though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. but when they start taking the 3G yeah. out of phones, I'm... It's, I'm- not, it's probably not going to be as long as you might think. I would, I, guess, I would guess in, like, two full years, we could see a phone without a 3G radio. Because they'll have... L- well, yeah, I mean, it could be, like, the first phone. But I'm saying we'll start to see it by then. But that's a couple years away. It's not that long. These years are flying by. Oh, no, it's not supposed to. Be, it's not supposed to be until twenty twenty one. What L- VOL when they cut off the three G network? Two G and three G will be out by twenty twenty one. Okay, but we can still <laughs> see phones. phones I haven't, I haven't heard that word for a long time, yeah. Ron. <laughs> but I'm assuming we could still see phones without a three G radio before that. Well, oh yeah, yeah. but they'll, they'll have to keep that network up and running because you've got people yeah. on older phones still. Right. That ma- no, that makes sense totally. Everyone who's on their older phones, that makes sense. But, I mean, we're all, hey, we're forward thinkers here. I mentioned this. <laughs> we're looking at the future here. I guess I'm just curious, and obviously I don't have numbers offhand or anything, but when was the last time a phone was ridiculously successful that was not on Verizon? You know, like, was the One X really that iPhone. successful? Well, besides the iPhone, right? No, I mean, that's it, probably. The Galaxy, the Note and the Galaxy S3 were successful, well, you, but they were everywhere. Yeah, you're saying just in the U.S.? Because, I mean, outside, that changes everything. Yeah, I would say 
in the U.S. When's the last time we had like a major Android phone that wasn't well, like the S two? S two was pretty yeah. big. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, was yeah, S2. S2. yeah, S two was pretty big. I think that might be it. But that yeah. came out super late in the states, though. Yes, yeah, it, did. it was really late. So I mean, I don't know if the sales numbers are that great because by the time they came out, actually, you could buy it. The S three was right around the corner. Everybody knew it. Well, the sales might not have been on, but it was like in our heads, it was probably one of like those great phones that everyone was trying to pick up because. Who was it? Well, every carrier besides Verizon made a hundred yeah. variants of it. Ooh, the 4G Touch. Okay. Yeah, that was like, embarrassing. Oh, that the Skyrocket. The Skyrocket. The Skyrocket sky LTE. Yeah. My Touch. <laughs> the Skyrocket HD. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, Skyrocket HD, and there was uh, did they find the, the Atrix was pretty big. I think the Atrix was pretty big because they marketed the hell out of it. The um, original. Yeah, the, I thought, yeah, the original people, Atrix. Yeah, oh, okay. People are saying the HTC Evo on Sprint. That might have yeah. been. Evo, that one time, Evo. that was like the biggest Android yep. phone in the world. So. Evo, Evo did have the top of the... So you yeah. get them here and there. I get, I, I'm get. i just sort of thinking like not having Verizon is just not a good idea for most phone manufacturers. The epic 4G touch, that was it. I think oh. the, uh, the, the glue between all these phones is all of these came out before Verizon's LTE network really got going. You know, okay. since that's happened, if you... You know, if you're not really on Verizon, you're not going to have a smash. Yeah, they're, 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 they're huge. You, you have to include them if you have a U.S. launch of a phone. And this Integra chip doesn't do that. So, and the HTC One's not there. I want, I want to like this company. You know, they have very good, like, outreach team and all that. They're really proactive, I think, in kind of engaging with the Android community. Cool. And NVIDIA, NVIDIA. And, and their Integra team. And so whenever I see that uh, people are kind of put off by what they're doing or kind of disappointed in what they see in NVIDIA, you know, I, I'm like, damn, because I really like that company, and I kind of like, I like their vision of, you know, gaming is awesome and all that stuff, but uh, I just wish that it was more widely available for people who want it, you know, like me. Like, I can't even, they announced Tegra 4 in January, and I know it's only February, but it's like, man, I want it now. I don't like waiting, <clears throat> all that stuff. CDMA, but, man. That's It's all... Everything yeah, boils down to CDMA being the, the problem. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, part of NVIDIA's problem is they're new to the mobile processor game, right? Like Qualcomm had a huge, yeah, that's, head, that's had a huge head start. Samsung's had a head start. So they're sort of new to it. Yeah. Um, and it could be that their chip was having battery issues with CDMA, but CDMA is not exactly the best with battery. Right. So between LTE yeah. and everything else like that with this new chip, they might have said, hey, you know what, let's just cut that out because we can't get it's the just battery. just a whole on there. damn hassle CDMA yeah. is. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it seriously is. It's annoying. And of course, Verizon has a CDM. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, MWC is next week. Uh, we're not going to be there. We thought about going. We're not going this year. So far, it looks like there's nothing major planned whatsoever. Samsung's not having a, an event. HTC, no event. HTC will have a booth. I don't think Samsung even has a booth. LG is going to announce the. Well, they've already announced Optimus G Pro, so that'll probably be there. We'll get Couple a hold of phones. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get a hold of a G Pro just to review and stuff like that. So don't worry, we'll have coverage on that eventually. Uh, hey, otherwise, so gonna announce uh, something. the Samsung Note Eight is that isn't that? Yeah. Oh yeah, that NWC. Is, I mean, yeah, it, I forgot it, about that. It might come out. We'll see if they announce it there or not. They don't seem to really care about MWC. Uh, Asus, yeah, Eric, they have some shiny thing coming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Huawei is going to be there. ZTE. It's all the same people that were at CES that showed nothing that's ever coming to the U.S. So it's going to be uh, probably the slowest MWC in years. Android booth not there. Sort of unfortunate. Yeah, that's all I really have to say about MWC. Wasn't it? Wasn't the Android booth last year where we got the the bowl of jelly beans? Wasn't yep, that at MWC? Yep, bowl of jelly beans. Yeah. The Android booth's always been awesome. It's kind of sad to see that go away. No key no, lime pie. No key lime pie this year. Damn it. Damn. No key lime pie. Maybe uh, it's just because they couldn't get enough of it in time. Yeah. That's, That's why it. they canceled it. They canceled the booth. Of it take lime a long time. Oh my god. We're not going to have enough. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what else do we got? Ubuntu. I missed it because I was at the HTC thing. What did they announce yesterday? Something about tablets? Something? Yeah. Ubuntu? Is that a, is that a, U- Ubuntu. Ubuntu? It's, it's not Ubuntu. I just call it Ubuntu. U- Ubuntu. Boont. Why would it be boont? Ubuntu? Ask somebody in the chat. Somebody spell it out in there. Ubuntu. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. I'm going to find a linguistics major and see what so, he thinks. Somebody back me up on Ubuntu. <laughs> But it's, so Ubuntu. I got Ubuntu. There's no N in there, Darkwing. Come on, you're killing me, David. 
Kevin Ooh. says Ubuntu. 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 Well, whatever. <laughs> stop saying that. Ubuntu. <laughs> <laughs> no, stop saying that. Stop saying the F word. Okay, so um, story, story about it. Yeah, tell us about um, Ubuntu. So right when HTC posted that Instagram picture of the the what would become the HTC ones hidden under those those towels, um, news broke that Ubuntu uh, had a countdown that. I, if we had sat down and done the math, it was an hour afterwards. But well, from somebody what somebody say that whoever reported that the first couple of times, because we didn't really care at first, and we sat on, and somebody said like we did the math and it's perfectly timed. And you're right, it wasn't. It was an hour later. Yeah, it was an hour after, and um, um, I think The Verge even said that it was counting down to HTC's event, and yeah, I mean, everyone... everybody was freaking out that yeah. HTC was going to have an Ubuntu ta- tablet or something like that, so and. But I mean, it was a, it was just awkward timing. Like they had to know that that was going to happen, putting in an hour after HTC's event. And no one uh, watched it, I'm assuming, because everyone oh, was paying attention to yeah. HTC stuff. Um, so basically, you get the they're releasing developer um, preview of Ubuntu Touch for tablets tomorrow um, right? for the Nexus tablets. Yes, tomorrow. Um, I don't know what time. I don't think they announced. So we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on that, but you can download them for the Nexus Seven and Nexus Ten tomorrow. That should be sweet. Do you have to be running Ubuntu to flash it? No, I think it just flashes over its stock Android from sweet. what uh, from what I understood. Oh, that could be sweet. Yeah, I'll, I'll give us something to do tomorrow. Uh, I'm not too. I'm not volunteering my Nexus Seven for that. By the way, oh, I'm just putting I, that out there. I have a spare. I'll hack it or something. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sorry. Right, I, enough, I was enough. going to do that. All right, Tim, hack it. Hack away. Ubuntu it up. Uh, apps and games. You guys got anything? Unfortunately, I do. I'm a bad, bad man. I don't have a game or app, anything. Eric, what do you got? Uh, I have the game that I reported on yesterday that Tim uh, prodded me to review and then buy. But it ended up being a really good buy. It was called uh, Awesome Land. It's a throwback to 16, uh, 16-bit uh, platformers of the day, you know, um, Mario, uh, Metroid, yeah. Mega Man, that kind of stuff. Um, so basically, I mean, yeah, and it's you basically run around and stomp heads on Goombas and alien. Well, they're aliens, and Manly has his bike stolen, so you have to go help him uh, retrieve his bike. But I was really impressed. No, I hate. I usually hate anything with on-screen controls on an Android phone, but this had the the snappiest uh, jump and moving back and forth controls that I've ever that I've ever used. So it was definitely worth the uh, the two fifty that it's uh it's in Google Play for. Damn two fifty, cheap Android people I can't afford that. <laughs> what else you guys got, Ron? Send it, send a pro. Yeah, so there's a app called Send It Send a Pro. Uh, the uh, it's basically a way for you to just hook up your uh, uh, with a what is it called Dropbox or Box or Google Drive or whatever storage you use, and uh, send links to whatever files you've got um, via SMS, or if you want, you can uh, send it via email or whatever else. Um, but just kind of an easy way for you to kind of um, access that stuff and send it to people. Um, so whether it's just you know documents and stuff like that, uh, you can send multiple files. Um, so it's just a quick way to send that kind of stuff. So in my, in my playing with it, it was pretty pretty nice. I don't have a big need for that myself. Most of the time, I'm, if I'm sending stuff, it's for email and stuff like that. But if you've got files on your phone that you want to send between people, um, that's pretty nice to do that. So Sweet. Snapchat. I'll check it out. Tim. Yes. What do you got? You got an app? Yeah. This week, uh, I have SwiftKey keyboard for Android mobile devices. Um, both smartphones and tablets. Um, I think back in October, uh, SwiftKey announced that they were coming out with a new beta called SwiftKey Flow, and what it brought was a uh, like a, a swipe-based gesture typing. And it's kind of like swipe or any type of like like what you see in 4.2 and all that. But uh, today, it's out of beta. It's on Google Play. Currently, buck ninety nine on Google Play, and. Um, yeah, it's sweet. I mean, I've, we've been using it for months now, and it's nice. Um, 
you know. Is the new version any better than the beta? Because the, I thought the beta sucked. So Yeah, the beta good. did kind of suck at first. You know, it's got some more improvements and stuff. I will admit, I mean, like, I need to put it on a smaller device because it's kind of hard to use on the Note 2 just because of what, it's so wide. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's actually not too bad. It's pretty smooth, and as far as being, like, better than the beta, I mean, it's definitely, you can tell, like, this is, like, a final build of it, but being 100 times better than the beta, no, it's not, like, a huge, it's not no huge improvements, but it's it's gradual little changes and stuff. And But also, so they're calling it SwiftKey 4 or whatever, but I wish they would just drop the number scheme and just call it SwiftKey. That would be really nice. So if you bought 3, you just got an update to 4, right? You don't have to, like, yeah, rebuy. Correct. Okay. Correct. No, oh, yeah, correct. Oh, that would suck, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just wondering, you know, they changed yeah. the name of it to 4, but, yeah, yeah, you just get an update. Okay. Just update. And it's yeah. on sale for like a limited time, right? Two bucks or whatever. I think so. Yeah, yeah. it is on sale for two bucks. The thing is, like half off. It's usually three ninety nine. So you might want to jump on that if you were thinking about it. It's, got, it's cool. It's a good keyboard, and it has a bunch of themes built in, which is nice. I love themes for my keyboard, so that's nice. Do they have new I themes? I thought in the preview video they showed new themes or something. Or maybe um, I'm just waiting. Oh, I haven't even awesome. looked. I just applied cobalt. Was the red one was done? Was the red one new? The berry? No, I think berry berry was in it. No, I think they have a different one. No, I think they have a, like a legitimate red one. I'll have to but look. I don't use the flow, and I've I've noticed a significant like it's it's a lot snappier for me this new since the new update. The flow um, does just, probably slow it down a little bit. Well, I don't. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Um, yeah. Every person that I talk to in my family that has Android, you know, has always said, hey, this keyboard sucks, and I've told them to download SwiftKey, and they were like, that's like the best $3, 3 or $4 I've ever spent. Yeah. It's it's the best keyboard out there. It's awesome. I'll have to, I'll have to give 4 a shot and turn off Flow, because I don't like Flow. I don't like the swipey stuff. Like, I use the stock Android 4.2 keyboard, and I don't ever use the... Uh, See, I, I, I like the Android 4.2 keyboard. It's It was hard to kind of like, I just wanted to try it out, you know, and um, it's hard to get off 4.2 keyboard. Yeah, I like the 4.2 keyboard. I just don't use the gesture flowy stuff. I just type on it. Uh, it's super keyboard. smart. It's a smart little keyboard. I love I love swiping, man. I'm just like, all my friends are like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm swiping, baby. Swiping what on are you notes. doing? I love it. Yeah. Uh, you guys want to do Q and A stuff from earlier? Yeah, Tim, let's you, do it. Tim, you had some questions that you pulled out, right? Yeah, uh, on Monday, posted up our session Q and A session, at, like volume ten now, and um, I pulled out three questions for us to answer tonight. Um, first, if you could create a hybrid animal, what two animals would you use, and why? So, Ron, go ahead, start us off. Um. I think the clear choice is a hawk and a lion. So that's oh, clear. That's clear. It's, it's, it's just obvious. that clear. It's pretty obvious. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that now that, that I think about it, that yeah, is obvious. It's, I mean, it's obvious, right, guys? Honestly, that question just made me think about uh, animorphs. That's all it made me think about. Oh. Animorphs. <laughs> just flipping Man. the book at the bottom and watching Damn. it change. That was bad. Uh, Dang. So, shout out to Tobias if you're still out there as a hawk. My childhood. <laughs> Eric, what do you got? Uh, I haven't decided yet, so come back to me. Are you serious? Kill him. What do Yo, you got? I'm thinking about this. this is <laughs> and I'm important. hosting the show. I don't have time to think about it. Actually, I don't know. It would have to be some sort of cat, but Ron sort of stole that. Cats are just like the greatest animal ever. Cat and like a... I don't know. You know what the worst animal mashup ever is the jackalope. Do you guys know the jackalope? Yeah. Maybe that's a Montana I've, thing. I think the jackalope that's like a rabbit or a, a jackrabbit with the like antlers. With the antlers, yeah. And like it's in like every redneck town in Montana. There's like giant statues of the jackalope. Worst animal mashup ever. That's all I got. All right, here we go. Cat in a chinchilla. You get the you get the cat and but the fur of the chinchilla, and that's that's the best right there. It's pretty sweet. I wouldn't mind taking like a snake with wings or something. I don't know. It just sounds like terrifying. Exactly. It just sounds <laughs> kind of like thing ever, yeah. Yeah, it just sounds yeah, cool. Like yeah, like a okay. flying cobra or something like that. I don't know. It just sounds awesome. A flying cobra the with apocalypse right there, yeah. Tim. A flying yeah. cobra with spider legs. It's one of the signs. Oh <laughs> <laughs> that would be definitely snake with of, wings <laughs> equals dragon. Says the, end the, of the chat. world. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. I guess it would be a dragon. Look at that. Um, but maybe you could do dragon and man and be Trogdor. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I'm okay with that. 
was a dragon. Question question number two uh, was, will Motorola or anyone else ever produce another high-end physical keyboard Android phone? And um, I'll just field it real quick, um, at least for myself, then you guys can go. But um, I say no. And when we're when I and I only say that because you said high end physical keyboard. I think uh, we have figured out finally that high end QWERTY keyboard products don't sell. Ask Motorola; they've been trying to push them for the longest time now. Well, and they're just I, like what? I wouldn't say that they put their full force behind any of the droids. I'm not saying they put their full force on. I'm not saying the Photon Q is the best Motorola can do. I'm just saying it's a piece of junk. By the way, your, your dogs are making a hybrid animal. As we speak. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much a wolf and a boxer pet. But um, so yeah, high end keyboard device. I don't think we'll be seeing any time, any of those anytime soon. At least on the high end department. Yeah, I don't really think so either. I don't think they are, there's a, I don't think there's a market for it anymore. I know there's yeah. people that still want keyboards, but I don't think there's enough to do it. It's a, a, I would if they had if they had a sm a super phone with a keyboard. I would I would seriously look into buying it because I'm no, I was always a big fan of the Droid line, Such and I no I'm being dead serious right now. I don't think no. I always no. when I had the Droid two and the Droid three I would I would look at the Droid X and the Droid X two and I'd be like well why do they get the better processors but I don't get I don't get any of that you know I always get the dumbed down version. Is that yeah, the palm, we're looking you pre palm whatever. Palm Pro 2, the you, oh, you, oh, this? This is the best phone ever? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, best phone ever. Huh. I love it that every, like, every other show we get a Palm sighting. Yeah, I've never even kind of passed by. I've never held a Palm phone before, and yet we always get a sighting. I love it. Yes. It feels so good in my hand. I always keep mine close by the old OG droid. And it's, it just it kind of like makes me reflect. Every time I'm writing something about you know a future device, I'm just like, I just have to, I got to go back to my roots. Where, where it all began. Rub yep. that, rub that flat keyboard. Get a little magic going. <laughs> no, I got the, I got the uh, raised. The yeah, I got one the bump too. Oh, you got the yeah. good version. Yeah. yeah I did. Well, I think because this isn't my original, my the first one, the power button got stuck, so I had to replace it, and they gave me a bump, raised keyboard one. So I kind of miss my flatty, my old flatty yeah. keyboard OG. That, that was quite the controversy that they <laughs> yes, made a second was. version with slightly bump. Yeah. Yeah. Good old OG. All right, we got one more question. What do we got? Tim. Sorry about that. I was thinking about the OG. <laughs> and just daydreaming. Just reminiscing. Mm, bumpy uh, keyboards. Our third and final question that I pulled out was, when will my Verizon Galaxy Nexus get a 4.2 update, or will it ever? And so I'll let, I'll let Kellen field that one real quick. Ooh, that's tough. Will it ever is, is the key part there. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I think it will. I, just, I have no idea when. I don't think anyone knows when. I don't think Verizon knows when. Although they did in the last week, what, release like a Resound, Inc. 2, Spectrum updates, DNA update. There was like four updates in the last. So maybe they finally got through the uh, holiday season. It took like three months off, and now they're finally updating phones. I'm not really sure what they're doing. But maybe it's, you know, up next. Maybe we'll get it Friday. Mark that oh, down. Uh, Confirmed. <laughs> All right. That's all. Um, the the Eric, update for that is going to come... Like, remember when we saw that incredible update that just came a couple, like a week ago? Yep. That's how late 4.2 is going to show up for the Galaxy Nexus. Oh, you mean like, the way down the road. Incredible? Yeah. Yeah. Well, That's how that long phone? it's going to be. Three years old now, and it's four years old now. Three years old, yeah. it's got an update. There it is. Thunderbolt finally yeah, got an ice cream sandwich. Too. So we're good. Boom. Wow. Oh, jelly That's some bigger. jelly bean? <laughs> no, it is jelly bean. That's awesome. That's blow your mind. Except, except you can't even like unlock it. There was no it unlock did. thing. Yeah, it's, it's just a crappy camera. Okay, here we go. Huh? Oh, 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 that's four point two. Yeah, I got, so I got oh, there's lock screen there's widgets. Yeah. So your OG Incredible is running software that's newer than Galaxy Nexus. Yeah. Yes. 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 That's the phone you want to get, guys. Don't don't be <laughs> on the Galaxy Nexus. It's all about the original Incredible. Okay, yeah, you, could, you could buy. Yeah, you could buy an, bucks. Exactly. You could buy an OG Incredible for nothing these days. Yikes. My uh, my OG Droid is on four point one at this yeah, point. Yeah. Well, we saw that one try to boot yeah. up, and it didn't do so hot. Hey, yeah. It's yeah. Just fine. I don't know is what it? you guys are talking about. <laughs> I don't want all this hate. Doesn't even hold a charge. And <laughs> oh. hey, that has nothing to do with the the software. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. 
that, that was back in Motorola's really terrible battery days. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ron, you wrote up a piece today about Android design and apps and all that stuff. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I think most people. I mean, we talked. We kind of talked about some of the stuff a couple weeks ago, but basically, I was just kind of reminiscing through looking at Twitter apps and the way that Android design has changed. And I think the the biggest impetus for changing up uh, Android apps is uh, over the past three years. I think it's just been the, the screen sizes. So starting in around 2010, we started getting uh, phones that had four inches or larger. Uh, that was the year when you had the Droid X, you had the Evo, you had the Streak, uh, you had the first Galaxy S. Um, all those phones were all these these larger screens, and they just kept going up from there. Um, so, and with phones that big, it's harder to do, you know, tapping all over the screen to hit buttons and stuff like that. It's doable, but it gets more difficult. Um, so that's when we started seeing more changes towards a more gesture-based uh, UI for apps and that kind of thing. And so... Um, Basically, the, the gist of it is just kind of looking at that history and then also just looking at um, just some different examples of how UIs have, have changed and how they adapt and how Google has, for the most part, pushed a this idea that um, all apps should um, have the same UI and just be able to shoot up and expand, which Google themselves actually, they don't follow if you look at apps like Chrome, where the UI is completely different on a phone versus on a tablet. Um, but... Um, so they, you know they've just been kind of pushing that agenda, and um, I think I think it's interesting. I think we're in it, but I think we're just at the beginning of it. Um, you know, we've we've seen stuff like uh, Sanjay and Mod, we had the custom gestures on the. I think it was for the. You could do it on the lock screen for sure, and I think maybe even on the home screens where you know you just draw whatever and it launches an app or performs an action. I used to have a triangle to turn on the flash for flashlight for my lock screen. Um, so we're seeing stuff like that, but even even just you know doing more stuff, I think we're just starting to see that. I put up a link to there's an iOS app called uh, Mailbox um, to use uh, Gmail for your mail, and depending on how far you swipe determines the. Um, so like if you just swipe partway, it will archive. Swipe all the way to the right, it'll delete. Swipe partway to the left, it'll uh, give you a time when you want to see that message again. That would be so. Cool. It's, yeah, it's a really, really nice app. And so just seeing, I'd, I'd love to see more Android developers. You know, we've seen plenty of, okay, swipe, and it's just this aggressive swipe to get rid of stuff. So I'd so, love to see more subtlety there. So what's the problem, though? Is it Google hasn't pushed it forward enough? Are developers just lazy asses? Do companies not have budgets to pay Android developers? What's the deal? Because we're starting to see some of them, but it seems like more, it's more of the sort of interesting or creative um, app designs are from, like, you know, independent developers. Do they just have more time? What's some of it is, but then you get you get examples like uh, like Pocket, which is definitely not like an independent independent developer. And the way that you know you just swipe over and that that gives you your action bar and stuff like that. So I mean, it's definitely, uh, you know, it's definitely showing up all all over the place. But there's still plenty of apps that don't like the Flickr app, for example, didn't get updated. Well, it got updated on Android, but still have, uses the uh, the same <clears throat> UI schemes from Android. 2.3, I guess, basically, um, that, that kind of stuff. So there's, it's, it's weird. I don't know why not everybody is. Um, Google has certainly been pushing it to, to some extent, but um, they, could, they could certainly be doing more and, and even just, you know, pushing. I think the biggest thing is just, you know, most people are getting used to the idea of, okay, I can swipe between stuff to see different content and that kind of thing. We're starting to see that kind of flow out through most of the apps, but uh, we aren't really seeing a lot of more subtle stuff with gestures and a, and a lot more, you know, more natural uh, UI stuff. So like Chrome is a, is a really, really good example. I love switching between tabs on Chrome on my phone. Um, I'd love to see more stuff like that where people are actually just more subtle gestures than that instead of just super aggressive swiping across the screen because anybody can do that. But adding a little bit more subtlety there, I think could, you could do a lot of stuff there. Like, like with the uh, camera in and, and Android 4.2. Uh, where you have all that kind of stuff. Just seeing more UI, UI ideas like that where you're not relying on buttons and you can do it from anywhere. Which seems like Google's really trying to push. At least they talk about pushing that. But it, they could take it a lot further. I, <laughs> think, uh, <clears throat> I, I mean, I don't know what they can do to make more apps adopt, though, this stuff. Do they need to create, like, some magical machine where developers can just, like, throw their app in it and it, like, redesigns it for them? I'm not really sure what they should do, but... It's taken way too long for apps to become beautiful and innovative and use all of their new guidelines. I mean, these guidelines have been out since, well, at least 4.1. That's when the new ones but, came out, yeah. That's when the new ones, but they even started before that, I think. And I know they're doing, they do, uh, on their developer YouTube channel, they do like once a week, it's like Android design, and they take an app that's popular from the market or the Google Play Store, and they just tear it apart and say like, this is how it should look kind of thing, which is kind of <laughs> cool, but... 
Uh, I don't know how many of those developers have actually taken their advice. I think maybe they did Tasker, and Tasker released a beta that looks new, but I don't know. It would be nice to see more better designed apps, but I don't know when we're going to get them. I don't know how you convince companies to, you know, invest the time and energy into it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's tough. It's tough, guys. <laughs> but, I mean, we are, we are seeing some stuff, and in, in, uh, I forget. Let me see. There was a – because a lot of people complain that, like, Android, uh, you know, nobody's designing apps for Android first, too. So a lot of apps are cross-platform. But uh, Shift Jelly, they released, um, they, they do Pocket Cast, and they just um, released some numbers and said that they actually sell five to one uh, compared to Android and iOS. So for every one iOS app they sell, they sell five on Android. Um, and that's supposed to because the, it's really cool. And it's supposed to because Listen by Google has always sucked horribly and was eventually abandoned. And so there's just this space for a podcast app. Um, so, I mean, there's definitely space for more innovation and stuff like that. It's just we haven't, for some reason, we're not seeing that. We're not seeing people go, uh, you know, do more stuff like like a innovative email app, like what Mailbox is doing, or, you know, even stuff with games and stuff like that. There's just, there's a ton of room out there, but people aren't really, don't seem to be taking advantage of it. And I think a lot of that is that people are uh, just under the impression that, oh, if you want to be successful and make money, you have to do it on iOS, and then maybe you bring it out to Android. But I think there are certainly examples that prove the opposite of that, where you can definitely make money and, you know, be a big developer in that space. Well, I think you just brought up an interesting point. You know, the reason that there's so many podcast apps on Android is because the Google-supplied one sucks. And I think the reason would be the opposite for why you would find so many Gmail applications on iOS is because historically, up until up until recently, the Gmail application on iOS was not not good. You know, so, you know, that led to more development of that. So... I think, and I think most Android people would just be okay with using the Gmail application that Android, you know, that Google provides. Although I would really, really like them to overhaul that and keep it up to the iOS, but we've gone into that hmm. already. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to fix it, <clears throat> how to make it better. Hopefully over time. Maybe at I.O. we'll find something new about Android theming and design. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be cool to see Google even just get incentive to developers and say, hey, if you, you know, not only follow our guidelines, but do something different and really push the platform, maybe we'll give you a kickback. Mm -hmm. Something. There's got to be some sort of incentive, I would think. Yeah. <laughs> get a free pair of Google Glass if you make a really cool app. Yeah. <laughs> but, you, but you have to fly to, like, Costa Rica to pick them up. Yep. Yeah. Something weird like can't that. Can't just send it. That would be too easy. Yeah, we can't just send them to you or give them to you for free for putting time and effort into a contest. No. <laughs> nope, nope. Uh, let's see. What else you guys want to talk about? We should start wrapping up. It's about 7.20. Wrap-up time. Yeah. Wrap-up time. Uh, how about that Google Gmail search, Tim? Well, uh, so, yeah, I mean, I wrote it up today <laughs> because I got the invite, and then we also received, like, a tip about it, but then in the comment section of the post, people were like, I've had this for weeks. Oh, really? And, I, don't, I still don't have it. Yeah, exactly, and I was like, well, I love it when that happens, when they roll something out, and yeah, no one gets it. Yeah, those mysterious Google rollouts. Yeah, and then again, yeah, okay, thanks for sending it in as a tip, all you great people who just <laughs> happen to say it's already been out for a while. Where you been? So, um, but either way, so at least I just got the um, the go-ahead on my regular, like, personal Gmail account and on my Droid Life account, but um, so you enter in this um, search field trial and basically so from the search bar from on google.com or in your gmail you can search for files that are through your drive or any information that's already in your gmail like flight itineraries and packages and all it's kind of like google now built into gmail this so really, this really came out a while ago i guess i remember the google drive stuff but i, I do not definitely don't remember being able to like just search for packages and flights and google now style stuff i guess we just don't pay attention or something we do pay attention, that's the problem, and I didn't see anything about it. So I was like, oh, this must be news, writing it up like it's news during the Sony thing. I was like, oh, man. Because <laughs> nothing better happened during the Sony thing. Yeah, the news world totally stopped while everyone tweeted out every single individual game that was going to be released for the PlayStation 4. Oh, you guys want to talk about that for a second? PlayStation 4, that was a complete yeah, sure. dud tonight. Let's do it. I, I watched the... Well, okay, so for me, I'm not, you guys are obviously bigger gamers than me, but when I watched the thing, I wanted to see the actual console. I wanted to hear all the damn specs about it, when it was coming out, all that stuff. And all they did was say, 
we did some cool stuff with it. Here's a controller, which already leaked. And uh, here's a whole bunch well, of Well, I mean, they, they announced some specs. Sort of, sort of, right? I mean, they said what the processor is going to be. I mean, it's going to have 8 gigabytes of RAM and processor and that kind of stuff, but, you know. And then it was just like a bunch of guys on stage talking in generalities and showing weird videos, and they showed some UI stuff. Although they did do that cool thing with, uh, it's like live streaming of your friends playing games and stuff, right? Just some neat stuff. Yeah, and there are cool. a few features that are pretty neat. I have a feeling that the new Xbox is going to probably destroy <laughs> anything that they show tonight, but... Well, yeah, so you guys are all gamers. What did you see from the places you think that was cool or you liked or didn't like? I think their specs are kind of built, you know, for forward thinkers. Um, it's kind of future-proof, if you ask me, from what it sounded like, at least on paper. Um, yeah, that, uh, you know, your friend being able to take over if you're, like, stuck in a part of a game, that sounded really neat. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd love to see what it looks like. But uh, other than that, it was kind of, it was kind of neat. There was a couple parts, obviously, that were just totally boring and just whatever. But, yeah. Like 95% of it. Yeah. I'm an Xbox guy. I used to love yeah. big, be a PlayStation 2 fanboy. But then, you know, you start playing games at, like, Call of Duty and stuff, and I was like, okay, Xbox is probably the best bet for me. And so I never even bought a PS3. But, um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, meh. Nothing really impressed me to be like, oh, can't wait to buy this thing. <laughs> so, Kellen, I'll tell you what. Um, I've been watching E3 since I don't know how long, and you think that some of the uh, some of the manufacturers throw awkward press conferences. <laughs> the game industry can top you hands down on awkward really? in almost every single every single thing. So it doesn't surprise me that Sony didn't really hit it out of the park tonight. I mean, mm-hmm. they announced some good stuff, and it, it wasn't, but it. To me, it just felt like Sony had to be first and that they weren't ready. They didn't really have everything ready to show tonight. And I'm, they did get the, the, the basics down, but to say that, hey, we're announcing a new console, but we're not going to show you this new console, right. it's, it's, a, it's a little bit... It's a little yeah. bit backwards. That's like if ACC stood on stage yesterday and said, here's the ACC One and Zoe and all this cool stuff, but we're not going to show you the phone. Like, yeah. you, you have to wait a while. But we're not going to tell you when, though. You just have to keep waiting. That's yeah. weird. Yeah. It is weird. That's Sony so, for you. So, so when's, when's E3? Is that a summer thing? Yes, yeah, um, E3 is a summer event. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, it just... And Sony really needed this after the PS Vita because the, the Vita was supposed to be the end-all be-all for mobile, and uh, you know, that kind of went the way that all Sony handhelds usually do. Um, so To the pooper. Yeah, uh, so to, put it, to put it lightly. Um, so people were really, really hyped up about the, play, the P- PS4. You know, PlayStation has some die-hard fanboys. And right. All I've been hearing so far is that, you know, everybody's just like, eh. Well, speaking of the Vita, and some guy just mentioned this in the chat, and Tim and I had talked about it when we saw it right away on the press conference, that it's like Project Shield, because it'll play oh, yeah, PS4 exactly. games, and it'll and stream And Cobra just mentioned that. I mean, that's exactly what they're doing. Yep. Um, you know, they're making their own proprietary thing. I'm, I'm sure they took a couple notes from Project Shield, but I know um, this has been in the works for a while, though. I have to give them that. You know, the uh, the the pause it on a you can do this on the PS3 now for some games you can pause it on the PS3 and then continue playing on your Vita but nobody has Vita so nobody does this I mean I, so. I hate to say it but good luck Project Shield I mean if PlayStation's going to do this they're a much bigger name than Nvidia's Well the thing that console. Project Shield has going for it is Project Shield is um, Nvidia based and it's not Sony based you know if you have a computer with an Nvidia chip in it then you can take advantage of uh, Project Shield right no, it has to be a certain G- It has to be a certain um, a certain video card, though. Yeah, a certain video card, and it's like one of the. But see that you can add in retroactively. Right. So say if you needed yeah. to upgrade, you know, then you could just do that, and then you could have your Project Shield. But if you wanted to use the Vita and the PS3 or PS4 together, you'd have to buy both of those separately. Yeah. How much does the Vita cost? The Vita is three, two fifty to three hundred. Right now. Yep. Okay. So. Yeah, so Project Shield better be like 200. <laughs> oh, okay. Good luck with that. And while their PR team laughs at you. Yeah, it won't be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I'm sorry, but if a big a big company like Sony and the PlayStation Four basically does everything that Project Shield does, yet you don't need Project Shield's fancy or Nvidia's fancy video card in a computer, which less and less people have. Like, I don't know how the hell that thing's going to succeed unless it's dirt cheap. Sony's like, eh, we'll sell it for a loss, whatever. Nintendo's about to go under too with all this Wii U crap going on, but poor Wii U. It was a good idea. That video screen controller crappy thing they have it was kind of a cool idea but no it has, a, it, has a re, it has a resistive touch display i want to use one i want to play like the that zombie game that actually looks fun the, yeah, yeah that's the only thing that i want to play that's it yeah. yeah but the controller on that thing is huge yeah. it is it's really big it is kind we of should big. have a we should have a uh, we should have a special droid life where we just talk about games for at some point not anytime soon but you know <laughs> when the three comes around <laughs> yeah all right, well, I don't have anything else unless you guys have some other topics. Um, well, oh, I have breaking news in my inbox from LG. They announced the the F5 and the F7. Yeah, because they got leaked. They got leaked earlier. Not that like crap. Now we have to announce it. Yeah, they're dual-core processors. They're mid-range. Uh, 4.3-inch displays. Yeah, they're terrible. No one's going to want them or buy them. Write it up right. in the morning. Ignore that. The, <laughs> the F5 and the F7, the F-series. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the function key series. That's weird. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. Anybody else? Last words, final thoughts, shout outs, anything? Uh, final thought, TJ Shep. I meant to give him a shout out last week. Everybody wants to know what the uh, robotic breast that you keep talking into is. Oh, this? It's my snowball. Yeah. It's a snowball. Snowball. The thing is, when you hold it, you only get, like, the top half of it showing, and then the little light on the top kind of, oh, you know, protrudes like a, a little bit. Blue. So, it's like a glowing Yeah, oh, yeah I, I, wanted to right keep it, I wanted to keep it PG, but, you know, everybody wants to know. Inquiring minds would like to know. That's all I'm saying. Somebody uh, send Eric an HD camera, please. Or is it just me? Is it only choppy on my side? Not just you. Uh, not just you. Not just you. All right. Well, Eric, oh, you have some. You have something in the mail coming to you. And hopefully, it'll be there next All week. Right. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. Let's let's call the show. Thanks yeah. everybody for tuning in. We'll obviously, we'll be back on the site tomorrow. Another show again next week. Same time. Same, same place. place. <laughs> same Droid Live channel or something like that. All right. Anyways, we're out. Peace. Thanks again, everybody. Bye. Deuces.